Our readings today highlight the plight of the people of God. In the first reading and the responsorial psalm, the people find themselves in exile, far from their land and yearning for a return to their previous life. They cry out to the Lord who hears them and promises comfort. A desert people are promised torrents of water to ease their suffering. What do you want me to do for you? The second time in two weeks, that question has been asked by Jesus. Remember James and John just last week. Teacher, we want to do for us whatever we ask of you. What do you want me to do for you? Too bad they weren't football fans asking Jesus for a World Cup. Instead, we have a couple of presumptuous brothers who thought that they could push Jesus around. Hopefully, we don't think the same, that we can push Jesus around. I feel much more secure in my faith if Jesus instead is pushing me around because he can be fully trusted. And the same arises this week from the lips of Jesus as recorded by the Gospel writer Mark. What do you want me to do for you? Instead of two apostle brothers making their request in pride, we have a blind man making a request in humility. Master, I want to see. And he teaches us how to pray. First, by yelling at God at the top of his lungs, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. He gets Jesus' attention. And the Lord calls the blind man to himself. The request is softened in tone and sincere in heart. Master, I want to see. Barthemius is before all else a man of prayer, and he gives to us a spiritual process, one perfect lesson, a beautiful prayer, and how to get the Lord's attention. When at a distance from Jesus, he feels the need to yell, to scream and be heard by everyone on the floor, to cry out, to shout, to be heard by way of sheer volume, the need to petition so loudly that everyone within earshot and beyond will hear. And there's no concern on his part for who hears him. Have you noticed that the further people's lives are away from God, the louder they need to yell in order to get his attention. But over time, the voice softens. He's calling you, they tell him. The softening voice is a sign that the one who is praying is suddenly experiencing the closeness of God. As we live and pray over the years, I pray that our voices soften knowing that Jesus is real close, rather than the desperation of crying and screaming for God's attention that is ever-present in the silence of our hearts. And to always have in our lives this movement of Bartimaeus, who just threw aside his cloak, he sprang up, and he came to Jesus, where there's no need to scream. The question that Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? It is the question that we can all hear as addressed to each one of us personally. And how we answer that question can reveal a great deal about who we are 
and what we value in life. In the passage in Mark's Gospel, which immediately preceded this one, Jesus asked that same question of two of his disciples, James and John. What do you want me to do for you? And their answer revealed a self-centered ambition. Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. The blind man's answer to Jesus' question revealed a very different heart. Aware of his blindness, aware of his disability, he asked simply, Master, let me see again. And in answering his prayer, Jesus addressed him as a man of faith. Your faith has saved you. He was already seeing Jesus with eyes of faith before he received back his physical sight. Once he received back his physical sight, we are told that he followed Jesus along the road. He immediately used his newly restored sight to walk after Jesus as a disciple up to the city of Jerusalem where Jesus would be crucified. His faith had shaped his hearing and his speaking, and now it shaped the path that he would take. Stay blessed. For further updates, subscribe to our channel and please click on the bell icon. Thanks for watching.